What does ISO 27001 require me to do? A key requirement of ISO 27001 is that you adopt a risk-based approach when implementing your ISMS. You are also required to ensure that certain processes are in place to ensure effective and proactive management and continuous improvement. These requirements are broken down into seven major clauses which deal with context of the organisation, leadership, planning, support, operation, performance evaluation and improvement. What are the seven mandatory clauses of ISO 27001? The seven mandatory clauses which you are required to comply with are clauses 4 to 10. Clauses 1 to 3 deal with scope of the document, normative references and terms and definitions. Within clause 4, you're required to identify the internal and external issues that are relevant to your organisation's purpose. You're also required to identify any parties that have an interest in your organisation's ability to provide adequate security for your information and you need to determine what the needs of those parties are. Clause 4 also requires that the scope of your ISMS is determined and that not only is the ISMS established and implemented, but that it is also maintained and continually improved. Clause 5 requires that your organisation's top management demonstrates effective information security related leadership, establishes an information security policy and assigns appropriate roles, responsibilities and authorities. Clause 6 requires that your organisation plans how you will take action to address risks and opportunities, as well as how you will perform information security related risk assessments. There is also a requirement at this point to identify how suitable treatments for the identified risks will be determined. Information security risk management is discussed further in a separate video. Another requirement of Clause 6 is that you identify a suitable set of information security objectives. These objectives need to be aligned with the output of the risk assessment and be consistent with your information security policy and your organisation's overall business objectives. You also need to develop plans that detail how the objectives are going to be achieved. Clause 7 deals with several requirements that need to be implemented in order to effectively support your ISMS. You will need to ensure that people are competent to perform their roles and that appropriate training and awareness is provided. There is also a requirement for you to determine communications relevant to your ISMS and to meet various documentation requirements. With Clause 8, you are required to ensure that any processes needed to meet the security requirements of your organisation are planned, implemented and controlled. Specifically, you must ensure that plans made in Clause 6 are implemented, including the risk assessment process and the risk treatment plan. You are also required within Clause 8 to control planned changes and to keep documentation as evidence of processes being carried out. Clause 9 is the clause that enables you to check to see if your efforts and your ISMS are working. This is achieved through the use of internal audit, management review and through monitoring measurement analysis and evaluation of activities. In the final Clause 10, you are required to ensure there is continual improvement and that any non-conformities you have identified are corrected and prevented from reoccurring. What is the difference between ISO 27001 and ISO 27002? ISO 27002 is a supporting document that provides guidance on 114 best practice information security controls that can be implemented to help mitigate the risks identified by your ISO 27001 risk assessment. In fact, these 114 controls are replicated in Annex A of ISO 27001 and you are required to consider all of them when determining the most appropriate actions to mitigate your risks. The controls are separated into 14 different control areas or groups. These groups cover different aspects of an organisation where you would expect to find some information security controls to be implemented, such as in human resources, IT, physical security and supplier relationships. 
Some control groups also have a specific outcome in mind, for example cryptography, access control and compliance. Can I use Annex A as an information security controls checklist? Many organisations use the 114 controls listed in Annex A as a menu or checklist of best practice controls to be implemented in order to provide a level of information security. However, URM recommends that your risk assessment is used to determine which controls are relevant, as some of them may not be applicable to your organisation. We would also recommend that you don't use Annex A in isolation, as ISO 27002 provides very good additional guidance on how controls should be implemented. It should also be noted that following your risk assessment, there may be additional controls not included in ISO 27002 or Annex A, which you wish to implement to address high-risk areas. So why work with URM? We could quote our track record here by stating that we have helped over 200 organisations to become certified to ISO 27001 across a range of sizes and industry sectors. We could quote our 100% certification guarantee. We could quote our experience. All our consultants have at least five years experience of implementing and managing ISMSs, which has enabled them to truly understand the challenges before becoming consultants. However, whilst all of these things are important, we believe it is our approach and our passion that really sets us apart. For URM, it is vitally important that your ISMS and ISO 27001 implementation reflects and is appropriate to your organisation. Your ISMS needs to be pragmatic and maximises everything you have in place and becomes business as usual. Doing something simply because the standard says so and producing a document to reflect that will never become fully embedded in your organisation. Added to our approach and passion is our flexibility. We will help you in the way that suits you best. Whether that is through providing advice and guidance, taking responsibility for some of the requirements such as risk assessment and policy production, or providing you with an experienced individual for a period of time. So talk to us and let us understand your objectives, requirements and timescales, and we'll work with you to understand how we can best help you.